Hey all viewers, tonight I will be talking about a YouTuber that I was formerly subscribed to. Um, I will be discussing, or rather, um, the subject of this podcast will be about a particular video that he has done that regards Western media, all right? Western media media culture, so to speak. Um, in particular, some of the things that he does not like, he does not approve of, things that really get on his nerves. All right? This video will be yet another video about woke. Okay? And people's understanding of what the word woke means in terms of a vernacular context. And once again, we are going to be talking about the real um, vernacular origin and history of the word woke, which may or may not be a surprise to some of you. Um, It will not be a surprise to those of you who've watched my video that had to do with a particular Christian pastor by the name of Asna of Asna Avenger. All right, whatever that that sort of username is supposed to mean. Maybe it means Arizona Avenger or something such as that. I have no idea. That particular Asian American man also had you know these sort of contemporary ideas about the word woke which means nothing Basically, it doth not mean the same thing as what the word originally meant and what it means in the black community, to be entirely honest. Okay, the word woke means something something entirely different in the black community than it means in politics. And I will be honest, some of you do not know this, but maybe you have some black friends or maybe you go around black people and you may realize that some of you will give you strange looks when you start talking about woke and you start basically labeling things woke and you may notice that some of your black friends or some of the black people black american people specifically black american because woke is black american vernacular and basically this was a term that originated in the civil rights movement We're going to talk about the history of it. I will just put it this way. Some of your black American, you know, some black Americans who know what this term means and the history of this term will give you strange looks or just openly say, hey, this is a word that comes from the black American community. I do not know what you have heard from particular transgender or, you know, sodomite peoples or whoever who are saying differently, but no, they did not create this term. This term came from the black American community. And when you talk about woke, you're talking about our, you know, hardships and struggles in this country. And when you say you're having a war against woke and you're you're agreeing with the politicians, I don't care if you're a Christian or not. To those of us who are black American, and we're seeing you're using a black American vernacular word that has to do with the freedom and the sort of political struggles of black Americans to have equality in this country, we will look at you as a white supremacist. Hey, we can attend the same church together. It it doth not matter. When you're saying you're going to have a war against woke, some of us have enough common sense to know what the word means and know that you did not do any sort of research in the history of that word. And you have decided to label everything, you know, that you do not like woke. Some of us know that. Anyhow, the particular YouTuber in question is going to be Ptolemy. We're going to listen to his video. It has to do with media. It has to do with Ariel the Little Mermaid and some other subjects. The man is hes playing Elden Ring during this podcast and he is listening to Berserk music. No, I'm not lying. He really is that much of an edge lord. I mean, how much more... Uh, I mean, I could say some things about that, but hey, it is what it is. 
I mean, I mean, goodness, I don't think you can get get much more edgy than that. Okay, playing a FromSoft game while listening to Berserk, <laughs> to Berserk music. My goodness, some of you, per adventure, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But basically, I would just say that's pretty incel, okay? That's pretty... <laughs> I mean... But it's all common in the alternative right. And sometimes we're going to talk about this because... The people who basically have issue with me are, are the same sorts of people. And I might as well just talk about some of the things that they happen to... You know, produce this content. If you have a problem with woke, you know, with the word woke, you have a problem with black American vernacular. And when you take that word and you decide to malign it and basically use it as a sort of insult, well, I will always have something to say about it. And, you know, this particular video has to do with a variety of things. But let's get started with this podcast. Um, I'm going to try to skip the intro. White people, Daddy. Why is the funny seagull scuttle oh, voiced by Smackin' Fuzz Kicks? As the box office I'm statistics sorry. seem to indicate, this doesn't make for great entertainment, really. Okay, I have to start over again with this podcast because I sort of had it played. Okay, here we go. I was trying to skip the intro, but I had skipped ahead earlier. Okay, now I'm going to cut the volume Society up. is beginning to react to this draconian authoritarianism coming from... Okay, let me start again. Wake up and get that intro all the In an era of unprecedented censorship, it seems like to me that mass society is beginning to react to this draconian authoritarianism coming from not only our governments here in the West, but also through a very tightly controlled media consensus, which... Ironically, it's just creating more backlash, and you see it across the film industry and video games. These producers are so fixated on politicizing and propagandizing every single one of their new releases, and as the box office statistics seem to indicate, this doesn't make for great entertainment. Really, it is one of the reasons why we have been languishing. Let me just say this. Anyone with much common sense knows that movies in the United States and other countries. Television in general, ever since it was created, has always been a medium of propaganda. It has always been a a medium of politicizing things. Even if you're going back to the old, you know, war ads for World War I and World War II, you know, or you're going back to the old Vietnam movies trying to glorify, you know, uh, basically wholesale slaughter of Vietnamese people and just making war seem good. All of that is propaganda. So, you know, the pr- sort of pretension that this is something new, that uh, for whatever reason, um, basically, what is happening now in regard to media, in terms of media being used as a medium to push certain agendas, is something new. Or somehow, whatever is happening, you know, today is somehow especially grievous. It's ridiculous. In regard to censorship, you know, this stuff has been going on a long time before many of these people were born. You know, censorship has been going on, you know, in the United States especially. You know, there was a time when you could not even... You know, if you had political movements such as the Black Panthers, the government would basically spy on them. If you were a communist, you know, the government, that was basic. I mean, you could be taken to court over this stuff for treason. Now, that is a political ideology, just like alternative right is a political, you know, alternative conservatism or this sort of alternative right these sorts of alternative right mindsets, they themselves are are sort of political movements. Okay? You know, this co- censorship is nothing new. Let me simply say that. Propaganda in the television medium is nothing new. You know? Um, but let's continue. Let us continue. 
before I sidetrack myself too much. Being in such a long period of stagnation across various realms of modern entertainment, there's an increased hostility characteristic to a lot of the culture promoted at the moment, especially by Hollywood and especially in the Western video game industry. It's just so in your face, you know, you get like a classic European folklore, fairy tale. In the case of one of Disney's most recognizable and valuable IPs, of course, The Little Mermaid. And there's these Hollywood executives that are gleefully rubbing the fact that they've race swapped Ariel as some kind of weird psychotic flex in the faces of people who literally just want to pay to see a family film after a long work week to take the whole family to see Little Mermaid and you know, your daughter goes, Daddy, why is Ariel black? Why does Ariel have dreadlocks? Why does Sebastian hate white people, Daddy? Okay, and this is the whole crux of the issue. This is the whole crux of the issue. Ariel is black in this new Little Mermaid, you know, movie. If you have not heard, the new Little Mermaid movie basically has made Ariel black. All right? And, oh, well, the white girls are going to ask, why isn't Ariel a white, gr a white actress? This is terrible. It's so confusing to the, to the, to the, to the poor children. They, this is, this is what often is done. This sort of idea that if you, if you expose this sort of diversity in media, it is something bad. Now... This is, to be entirely honest, this is a fantasy story. The Little Mermaid is a fantasy story. And frankly, for some of you people, you seem to think somehow that Western media is this sort of shining thing, this sort of shining exemplar of, of just this, this, oh, Western media is so good. We're going to talk about what The Little Mermaid had in it. Which basically, in The Little Mermaid, there were sexual symbols, such as, this is phallus, this is a phallus. Okay, this picture here, this was the real Little Mermaid. Okay, the whole movie was sexual. The whole movie was sexual. Let's be honest, and the whole movie was, you know... You want to call this a family movie when it is well known that they basically put a male, a male organ. You can see what that is. I know you can see what that is. This is well known knowledge. The creators of the Little Mermaid movie, the cartoon, and this is Disney. This is good old fashioned American entertainment, right? You know, look at we got we got two. You know, white act. You know, we have two white characters, right? It's 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 a European folk tale, right? And look what they've done. This is how nasty the first one was. But is he talking about this? No, he isn't going to talk about this. He is not going to complain about this. But this is good old fashioned media, right? There was propaganda in that too. They were trying to sexualize the children. They were literally showing them overtly sexual things. You see what this is. This isn't a little mermaid too. Look at the the priest who was doing the wedding. You can see what that is. This had been found a long time ago. Basically, this this priest, this little weird little priest, has an erection. But hey, it's a family movie. You can't. You, the, the the little white girl is going to ask her daddy, "Why is Ariel black?" Yeah. And the first one was was so blatant as to put these weird little sexual things in the movie. But hey, you know, some of you, you know, may not even care, but this is the truth. But, you know, most media, as it was produced in the United States, the, the beginning of the cinematic industry, and he wants to talk about Western movies and Western entertainment, well... Western entertainment, for the most part, was not at all very diverse. Okay. Um, it took so very long for black actors and actresses to even be allowed. Excuse me. In these movies. So, you know, K 
considering how risque and nasty the first Little Mermaid was, it's a very sexual movie in general. You have this mermaid and basically in a bikini and a little shell bikini, half naked woman. Okay, this woman barely has any clothes on. She has her little fins, you know, covering the lower body. It was very sexual. It was a very sexual movie. Let's be honest. If you consider this to be a family movie, you have... I do not know what to say. Maybe you like your young your young sons or your, your young boys, if you have any. If you have a family and you find, you open the door to find your your son touching himself... You know, because he's seen the little mermaid, he's seen this half-naked mermaid, and it's really sexually aroused him. These things used to happen. It may seem stupid to some of you. It may seem really dumb to some of you, but to call this a family movie, oh, the little mermaid was a family movie, and the little white girl's going to be asking, why is the little mermaid a black woman? That's the least of what you should be concerned with. They're literally showing you some male sexual anatomy. They're showing kids how an erection happens. This is disgusting. This was done specifically. This was done in a subliminal fashion so you would not notice it to sort of influence the children in all likelihood to be sexual or for them to hide something sexual in the movie just just because they wanted to. But it is a family movie, right? The first one was so good, right? That, that, this is why I do not take this type of, oh, or, you know, they're, they're putting black people in all the media. They're, they're putting minorities in all the media. This is stupid. This is sucks. This is woke. Yeah. You people do not even know what the word woke means, but you want to throw it around all the time. You want to call anything that you don't like or you do not agree with woke. And basically, woke is black. If it's black, you get to call it woke. Anything bad you get to call woke. That is how it is with a lot of of you fake conservatives. A lot of you are not real conservatives. You you actually do not have very much of a grasp of propriety and, and of the things that you conserve, the things that you do, the thing that you do not conserve is the faith. If you are a Christian, why would you want your children to see this? You wouldn't bring your child to a movie theater to see this type of stuff. But you knew how bad it was. You knew that this was some half-naked woman. You knew that this was a sexual movie in the first place. And, you know, they hid sexual things, you know, from us in this movie. But, hey, you know, this is well known. A lot of people know about this. But, anyhow, let me listen to more of the this edgelord. Why is the funny seagull scuttle voiced by what sounds like a chain-smoking pan-Chinese prostitute? You know, I have so many questions, Daddy, and you, you turn around and you're like, you know what, honey? I don't know why. I, I, I can't logically answer these questions for myself anymore because it doesn't make any sense. I think there's a lot of guys like this in the normie sphere. When the lights go out at night and they're lying in bed, they go, why does it have to be this way? Why is Snow White, now Snow Brown, played by a salty chocolate Latina, right? I have a lot of questions. Why is Aragorn black in the new Magic the Gathering Lord of the Rings card collection? Is this really about equality? If neoliberalism was supposed to be the Popperian end of history, then is this wokeism? But you saw what I just showed you. You saw that Disney has been putting sexual stuff in their media long before most of the sexual type of legislation ever really took place. Okay, this was before transgenderism was a big thing. This was before, you know, you know, sort of alternative sexual culture was really in vogue, you know, to the extent that it is now. But you still had sexual media and sexual things in the media. Like who framed Roger Rabbit? You know, when you think about that that cartoon movie, it was very sexual. But, I mean, his problem with it has to do with the fact that, you know, for whatever reason, these people who are making the movies want to make them more diverse. And so certain characters, hey, they're putting some Latinos, 
They're putting black people. Okay, they're basically trying to make the movies more diverse. Do I care? Not really. I do not care. And most black people and most minorities, you know, like myself, you know, most of us, you know, most mostly all we all we see in media for the most part, we you know, especially during the the nineties, there was that thing where if you saw a black person in the movie, you just knew he was going to die. Hey, let's be real. Some of you are old enough to remember, hey, in the in the 90s, if you watched old movies and you saw black people, they, they died. Especially horror movies, but it was not just horror movies. There was this weird thing. Usually you would have one black character, and if it was a movie in which people died, guess who's going to die first? The black man, or the black woman, or whoever. And usually in a very terrible fashion. But, you know, this was a real thing. So, you know, American media is... It has a very long history, you know, in which basically what you saw and what sort of what was exemplified was, you know, a white protagonist, white characters, and basically most of what we see is white, okay? So if they decide to make The Little Mermaid black or Snow White Latina or whatnot, People like myself, we have no problem with it. I see wh- so many white characters that as far as I'm concerned, it, you know, who would not be satisfied with all of the white characters you have in movies? There's so many of them. All right? I mean, if I want to watch the old Little Mermaid movie, I can watch the old Little Mermaid movie. If I want to watch the old Snow White movie, I could watch the old Snow White movie. But... Because, for one thing, that's fantasy. That is fantasy. It reminds me of the whole discussion regarding Cleopatra and this, you know, this black actress who played Cleopatra. And I remember, how many Egyptians and white people were complaining when Elizabeth Taylor, as far as I know, of British descent, of Anglo-Saxon descent, played Cleopatra? How many Egyptians were complaining? Um, Egyptians, you know, who are mostly Arab people anyhow, um, you know, in this day and age, um, because that's where they descend from, were very upset about Cleopatra. They were very upset about, they said, oh, Cleopatra would never be black. But apparently Cleopatra is is a British woman. Okay, apparently Cleopatra's Angelina Jolie. Wow, that's incredible. You know, I mean, to me, the hypocrisy of that whole discussion is quite incredible. But you see, his problem is the color, is the race, you know, of the, of the, of the characters in question. You know, that's what he considers woke. Um... But anyhow, let us continue. The end of culture? Is Black Ariel truly the summit of human artistic expression? And of course, the mainstream answer to these questions is, fuck you. You know, that's basically it. It's, uh, oh, you're asking why Ariel's black? Well, it's because fuck white people. You know, it's like that's the perspective that we're getting straight from the horse's mouth at the moment. You're like, oh, well, okay. Well, maybe I won't go see a movie this weekend. And this is what you know, it's, it's very usual in alternative right circles, in little conservative circles, where, oh, woke. Everything's becoming woke. Why is the world become so woke? They're making every character that we used to love black. It's just, it's total hyperbole. They're acting as though, for whatever reason, you can't still find white actors and actresses in the movie business, which you can. I mean, it's though... Most movies don't have white actors and actresses. Actresses. Okay? Which which they do. You know, please forgive um, me mispronouncing um, the words. Um, anyhow, I don't al- often use actress as a plural, to be honest. But anyhow, um... What I mean to say is that it's 
it's just, I mean, it's the hyperbole, the ridiculousness of it, the ridiculousness. Oh, I'm so sorry. The ridiculousness. Oh, for some reason, I'm just having a problem pronouncing things. But it's, it is so ridiculous, to be honest. Um, it is so ridiculous. I mean, it is, though, it is as though, basically, people are, are basically, I mean, there's this idea, it's like, oh, the world is against us as white people because they decided to make Ariel and some characters that we know in movies black. That's just terrible. You know, oh, The Witcher. They remade The Witcher, but Triss is black. This, we cannot stand for this. Why don't you just treat black people like they're white people? To be honest. You know, I hear about talk about, oh, racism doesn't exist. Racism doesn't exist. All right, if we're all equal, why does anyone care? You know, if, it's, if, if it is a fantasy movie to begin with, and I do understand why people have a problem with The Witcher. Because The Witcher, you know, I mean, but to be honest, books, you know, television, movies. If you don't like that, you can get your own little recording crew. And you can make your own movie. Why are you leaving this, you know, movie making and, you know, TV series you know, making in the hands of big corporations. Do it yourself. If you want a lore accurate Witcher, hey, make the Witcher yourself. If you want a lore accurate Little Mermaid, make a lore accurate Little Mermaid. Um, as far as I know, even the Egyptians, the racist Arabs down there, the anti-black Arabs down there who want nothing to do with, you know black Africans or black people and they want no cultural association with Egypt you know with anything black apparently they're making their own Cleopatra so I think many of the alternative right people who believe that that media is sort of becoming too diverse they should start making their own movies they should start making their own movies. They should pull their money together. They should start, you know, they should find actors among their communities and they should start basically doing indie movies. They should have a little alternative right movie industry where everything is white. And basically, you know, they can do things however they would like it. I mean, no one's saying F you because you don't like the character in this movie, they're just disregarding you because they know full well that your complaints are stupid and you're not making the movie and they could care less. And I do not blame them because, you know, whether you like it or not, in regard to movies, in regard to books, you know, there's such a thing as artistic vision. You may not agree with the person who is making the art, who is making the product, but they have every right to make it. And so if you do not like it, it's just as he said, oh, maybe I just won't watch it. Yeah, maybe you should just not watch it. And stop being, you know, and stop pretending these people are literally cursing at you. And, you know, basically sort of acting as though, you know, your viewership actually matters. No, you can just not watch it. And maybe they won't make any more movies like that because enough of these alternative right conservative people decided they did not want to watch you know, a movie with diverse actors and actresses. And they decided, you know, we don't want to see that. That is not the experience that we came to see. All right. That would be realistic. Okay. But anyhow, let me continue. Um, I play the new Baldur's Gate. This is like a hypothetical scenario. I'm not playing the new Baldur's Gate, but say I was, right? Larian Studios just announced that they've actually collected data on the character creation statistics. Yes, he is. I mean, you have so many of these people say, "Oh, I'm not going to play the new, I'm not going to play the new um, RPG. It's woke." 
and yet you do. I mean, f- you may not understand, but this man, he is playing Elden Ring, as he does to, basically in this podcast, his commentary game, game plays Elden Ring. In Elden Ring, you had the same thing as you have in Baldur's Gate, as far as I know, in which you cannot choose a male or female character. So in other words, it's very liberal. Okay, what they like to call woke, which is a black American term, has nothing to do with what they're talking about. It has to do with civil rights. Now, basically, um, in Elden Ring, Radagon, is, he's not a man, he's not a woman. You can call him a transgender, you can call him, you know, two-soul or double-sex or whatever you would like to call him. But it is very liberal. There are people who really, you know, they would really associate themselves with him in this day and age, you know. And there there may be people who say, oh, I have a gender just like Radagon America. You know, I think I'm a man and a, and a woman. I think I'm androgynous. So, you know, that's so, you know, that's so liberal. Why are they supporting, why is he playing Elden Ring as he gives basically this commentary? Because a lot of this opposition is really fake. It's to get people angry about the media. The media has always been used for propaganda. It always has been. The best thing for any of us to do if we want to get away from media that is promoting something is just to read books and just basically, you know, live a wholesome life. Get away from all of this violence. The man is, is playing some berserk music in the background as he plays Elden Ring. Berserk is probably one of the most satanic, and I'm just speaking in general, and, you know, if you're a fan of it, then you like it because it's metal. You like Berserk because it's it's so metal. It's so, you know, it's so bad and evil. It's sick. It's, you know, I mean, those are terms that sort of people associate with coolness. Oh, this is so great. This is so, you know, I mean, just accept it from me, okay? It's satanic in that it's it's bloody, it's graphic, there's some nasty sexual stuff in it. You know... Some of you who may not be Christian, you may think, oh, you, you hear that Christian talking about how satanic berserk is. Well, hey, I call it like I see it. I'm not talking about Church of Satan satanic in, in regard to the institution of the late Anton LaVey. No, I'm not talking about LaVey and Satanism. Satanic is a word that has a long history. It's related to the word diabolic. diabolic. It is related to diabolism so to speak. So, you know, we have to go back to words and understand what they mean if we really want to be entirely honest when we're using different diction. And I have to. I like to expand my diction. I like to expand my grammar. So, you know, sometimes I just say, hey, this is satanic. Berserk is satanic. I mean, if if berserk is not satanic, I do not know what is. Berserk is evil. I mean, it's You know, he's talking about culture, he's talking about media, he's talking about a family movie. And in the meantime, you know, the media that he is attracted to is extremely violent, is extremely suggestive. He says, oh, Japanese media is so much better than Western media. Well, Japanese media has the same things. It has the same sort of level of violence. It has the same level of sexuality. And it doth not matter if that sexuality is heterosexual, homosexual, transsexual. It's graphic. It's in, It's always there. Okay? I mean, we have a homosexual relationship in, in Elden Ring with Moog and McQuella. But how many of these alternative right people who, who say, Oh, Berserk is so metal, man. Berserk is so cool. Berserk is so, you know... I mean, in Elden Ring, Elden Ring and Berserk, oh yeah, this is a real man's media. Yeah, right. I mean, so many of these people who are, you know, say, oh, well, FromSoft is different than other corporations. They're not, they're not liberal like these other corporations, but they are. Gwendolyn was a trans, Gwendolyn was basically transgender. Gwendolyn was basically transgender. Okay, that is what Gwendolyn was. Okay, 
and you may have some of the FromSoft faithful and some of the alt-right edgelords who say, no, you can't say that. Miyazaki is based, man. Miyazaki is based. And a lot of these people use the term based. You have to understand the grammar. You have to understand the vocabulary. You have to understand the diction in certain communities, the parlance. And some of the parlance are words that come from black Americans. Based comes from a black American rapper. Okay. I think his name was Little B. And for whatever reason, you know, it's just like Viper the Rapper. Basically, some of these, and white Americans, for whatever reason, they love to take, these Euro-Americans love to take black American culture and just sort of appropriate it. And, and you know, for whatever reason, some Euro-American alternative right people decided, hey, you know, we really like the word based. And ever since then, they use based in to sort of indicate, hey, you're really racist, you know, you, you're you sort of against liberalism, you're against black people, you're against the woke. You're not woke, you're based, man. You're based, brother. Okay? You know? And that's, basically, it means, hey, you're cool. You're one of us. You know? You're one of us. You're not like one of those woke people. Okay, and those of us who know what woke means know that woke is a black civil rights term, and we do not appreciate some, basically, you know, these alternative right people and other people taking the word that we, that we have in our vernacular and we respect and using it in this way to associate with all types of, associate this word with all types of sexual mischief. And that is what it's done. To be entirely honest, that is exactly what it's done. You know, the the word woke is associated with all types of sexual mischief and was basically white liberals that took the word woke and decided to apply it to them. It has nothing to do with white liberalism, you know, college professors or whoever else. This is an old civil rights term. Okay? And we're going to look more in detail about that, you know, very soon. But we're going to wait to do that we're going to play this whole thing basically and there is upsetting levels of whiteness happening within the community within the player base you know there's been too many generic straight white characters being larped as in our rpg and it's just not good enough we have to do better because frankly it's disgusting Ugh, gamers are so fucking predictable aren't they we've given you all these different fantasy races and all these IRL brown ethnicities for you to auto-erotically inhabit, you know? But you gamer scum, what do you do? You create a classic RPG fantasy straight male guy. But you see how basically he's paraphrasing? He's basically taking the statements of the of Larian Studios, which basically, this is an old story. He is talking about an old story having to do with Baldur's Gate 3. It's an old story. And I'm thinking, all right. But you see, whatever it was that they said got under his skin so much that he's basically... You can hear the anger in his voice. He's taking something that was basically... You know, it is what it is. They said what they said. To be entirely honest, they said what they said. Do I agree with it? No, I do not agree with it. Because I know that, you know, most people in most of these countries in which people play video games... And basically, the majority of people on the world, as far as I know, you know, are white people. Because white people are all over the world. And the people who play these games, you know, are, we know the majority population is going to be playing the games. And therefore, you know, people are going to be making white you know, sort of human-type characters. Now, it had to do with different races in the game. If you do not know, Baldur's Gate is a Dungeons & Dragons game in which basically... Um, in which basically you can choose, you know, your own type of character. You can choose Tifling, you can choose Dwarf, Elf, that type of thing, right? Anyhow, Larian said, hey, a lot of you are just making human characters. You know, you're sort of, you know just doing that and I do not know if they really said anything about the color of skin but even if they were even if they were talking about the color of skin you know 
what he is saying, he's saying, oh, they're calling the scum and they're saying F you and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, wow. You know, this is on the level of projection. This is on the level of, okay, what made you so angry that this affected you so much? All right, the game studio decided to basically do some social media posts talking about how they want people to use the other races that they provide in game. And basically all of the alt-right people heard about it and they started talking about it at the time. Now, I will just be honest. Every single major RPG that is released is basically liberal. Let me just be honest. Most of these people who make these video games are liberal. Most media that we watch is liberal. You know, in terms of sexuality and everything else. There is not very much media that you can find... That is what would be called conservative. And considering the fact that he's playing Elden Ring and listening to Berserk music, I think he does not really even have a problem with that. It's just that he's, you know, for whatever reason, this has less to do with anything actually being really conservative. It has to do with race. It has to do with color. That's all it has to do with. This is his main contention. You can't make the mermaid black. You can't make Ariel black. You can't make Snow White, you know, brown or Latina, whatever. That his, that is his problem. It has to do with his sort of view, you know, which is in a sense, you know, it is based in this idea that his favorite characters and you know who he, you know, sees in the media should be white. You know, that's his problem with it. He does not have so much a problem with, you know, how much violence or sexuality is in the media at all. But I see this often, to be entirely honest. That, That is an old story. And I still think he will probably be playing Baldur's Gate 3 because there are not many good RPGs out in terms of just utility. Most of these RPG games are not even that functional and they're not that big. So most of us are going to be buying Baldur's Gate 3 because there are not many games out. And he says, oh, I'm not going to be buying Baldur's Gate 3. I do not believe him at all. I think he will be buying Baldur's Gate 3 because, you know, I mean, in terms of games as big as Baldur's Gate 3, I can say whatever I want about Larian Studios. I do not particularly agree with Larian and the way they do things and their ideology. But I would just be honest, because I'm not going to lie like some of these alternative right people and say, oh, you know, Elden Ring is not like those liberal games, you know, and I just play conservative. There are no conservative RPGs. Dungeons and Dragons itself is liberal. Dungeons and Dragons itself draws from many different types of religions, and there's nothing Christian about it. There's nothing conservative about it. Okay, there, there is not. Okay, but, you know, let's, let us just be honest. For myself, because I'm not a fan, I can say this. I don't need to be sort of a fan, a fanatic for a company like FromSoft or any of these companies. I can just tell the truth and just say, I experience media, but that does not necessarily mean that I'm aligned to media. Now, for him... He has to put on the act as though, you know, oh, well, you know, this media is especially bad and no. In terms of the RPG market, everything you see, it has a superfluous amount and a sort of visceral amount of violence and sexuality in it. Okay, and that goes for just media in general and the You know, you can say that about Western media. You can say that about Japanese media. You can say that about Korean media. You know, we can just sort of mark down the list. And we can find the same things. So, his problem has to do with the the color, the races of the characters. With a lock of blonde hair and a giant fucking sword. You can't do that anymore, okay? That's racist to do that. It's like, yikes. I mean, isn't this a little bit of like a kind of non-issue, really? Why are we talking about this when it comes to an RPG? Can't we just all LARP as whoever we want? What do I usually make? I make like a kind of white Nordic looking warrior because that's... And I mean, 
he's talking about blonde hair and the big sword. I guess Final Fantasy VII was not remade, right? I guess Final Fantasy VII, you know, that sort of sequel to Crisis Core, I mean, get out of here. It is so ridiculous to hear this, oh, we can't play as white people anymore because they they said something about how we're making white characters. It's so dumb to hear this stuff, to hear this content. It really is. It really is. It's just, just ridiculous. The complaints are just stupid. They're just stupid. They, they really are. I mean, Final Fantasy 16 came out, and just about every character is what you would tip, what you would call typically white. That was a game made in Japan, and that's one of the reasons why alternative right people love Japan so much. Because when they make RPGs like Final Fantasy, oftentimes every single character in those RPGs they don't look Japanese. They look they look like white Europeans. These people do not look Japanese at all most of the time, and so many white Americans, you know, Europeans and Euro Americans. Many of them love Japanese media because it portrays them in such a good good way. In other words, um, when you play a game like Final Fantasy VII, you get to play as a blonde-haired, green-eyed man. In Final Fantasy IX, you get to play as a blonde-haired, blue-eyed man. In Final Fantasy X, you get to play as a blonde-haired, blue-eyed man. Okay. Now, in Baldur's Gate, you can make your own character. So it, if you want to make a, a character that looks white, what are you complaining about? They've given you what they wanted. Why do you care about what Larian Studios, what the employees are saying? You know, I still play FromSoft games, even though I know that their workers are, you know, harassing the, the female workers at FromSoft. I already know this. I'm not a fanatic. I can experience media without supporting it. I do not support FromSoft. I, I do not support Larian. I do not have to have some type of personal, intimate relationship with video game companies. That is stupid as far as I'm concerned. Okay? I do not need to really approve of what they do. I'm just a person experiencing media. I paid 60 or so dollars for my Baldur's Gate 3, and I think he probably did too. Okay, I think he probably pre-ordered Baldur's Gate 3 just like I did. And he probably experienced the early access just like I did. Um, because a lot of people did. Because we knew that whether we liked Larian or not, even though we knew they were liberal, we knew, hey, they're going to give us a, a full product. It's going to be worth the $60. You know, if they have some weird little sexual relationships in it that we can get involved with, we don't need to do the, the gay stuff. We don't need to do the sort of sodomite type behavior. We don't need to do it. We don't need to do the lesbian stuff either. Um, excuse me. Um, we don't need to do it. So, basically what he's complaining about, I mean, it really is a, it's a small thing. It's a small thing in the whole scheme of things because it really does not, does not matter as much as he thinks it does. But, I mean, you can hear him. He's so upset about it. He's saying, oh, they're saying F you, and they're t calling us scum. No, no one's calling you scum. They're just stating, you know, sort of what they believe. Do I agree with them? No, I don't agree with them, because I already know most, you know, through most people are white, and they're going to make white characters. It's just like here in the United States. Most people here are white, and they're going to make white characters. So obviously, if you take a number, if you take statistics, and you see how many people make white characters, you're going to see more white characters. Okay, you're not going to see too many tiflings or elves or drow or just, you know, characters made with brown skin because most people are white. That is common sense. That does not affect me or my experience as a player. I can make whoever I want. It's a game where you can make your own characters. So how, you know, a person would be so angry about what Larian says regarding their little demographics or whatnot in terms of the character builder, 
you know, it's it really is getting angry over just simple type of things, to be honest. But anyhow, let me continue to listen. Just the way I roll. I didn't realize it was illegal or distasteful for me to create a character that I want to create in an RPG. Illegal. As if the be. point of an RPG is not to express one's individuality. And, you know, by the way, I'm not even Nordic, you know what I mean? But the point is, it, it's a role-playing game. As is my prerogative, I will LARP as whatever kind of white sub-ethnicity I feel like in a fucking video game if the RP calls for it. And I don't care if anyone else- And just listen to all of the cursing. Does anyone really think that Larian was that rude about what they had stated? And I'm, I am not even defending Larian, but I'm just thinking, you're getting this angry over what a company said and regarding the, the sort of statistics that they took of their playtests. And they said, hey, the, it seems like people made a lot of white characters. You know, they have a right to their opinion just like you have your, your right to your own opinion. But you can hear the anger in his voice. You really can. And I already know why a lot of people like the Nordic idea, because they seem to think that it's the uber race that Hitler talked about. You know, and I see what happens on 4chan. A lot of conservatives like to sort of, you know, do posts with the swastikas and talk about a lot of racist stuff and talk about a Nordic master race and Freya and Viking gods and all of this stuff and that's that's their type of that's their type of racial sort of Weltanschwung, so to speak. The little racial worldview in which, you know, to them, the white Nordic German man is the most supreme exemplar of the race. I mean you can go all the way back to the writings to the Pulp Fiction writings of Robert E. Howard, and you can see the same thing. That's no surprise. That is no surprise at all, to be entirely honest. There's a problem with that, even though the autism of modern gaming dictates this fugue state where if you're not white, then you must agitate for racial representation in every single video game. But me, it would be weird and racist of me to create a classic RPG white male warrior, like that entire archetype apparently is coded fascism. Really they should be choosing to create like a black character at every opportunity. But just think about this, who is saying what he is saying? And I ask you, who is saying if you make a white character you're racist? Who is saying this? It's, it's just the majority of people, you know, saying this, I mean what? What world does he live on? Really, what world does he... Who is he preaching to? Honestly, who is he even preaching to? I do not understand. This is some of the weirdest stuff. You know, this is like the whole Gamergate thing. The whole Gamergate thing. And, I mean... Oh my goodness. They are so bothered by all of this. And I'm just thinking, can you provide proof... Can you show us where people are literally acting this rude because you made a white character? RPGs and video games are released every single year with white characters. Okay? We know this. Now, different... Different game developers may have their own political opinions, but you keep buying the games. So, if you have a problem with their political opinions, then you can make your own games. I mean, that's just the truth. Oh my goodness, this is weird, man. Goodness, it's so weird. And they should think about that racial inequality as they play the game, although there really is no true atonement for the sins of slavery and of white supremacism. As of course we all understand, but you know, as an aside, if you see a lot of these YouTubers that they'll create like a black character despite being some white skinny nerd, and, you know, that's fine if that's what you want to do. I mean, by all means, I'll, like, roll up to Windhelm, you know, with my Red Guard, and I'll be like, Hey, yo, I love Ulfric. That would actually be pretty based, you know, Talos is king, right? Like, uh, yeah, I can get on board with that playthrough, but... Here we go. Uh, we have the old alternative right parlance. We have the old alternative right ba parlance. Oh, this is based. Yeah. A, a term that was created by Little B, a black rapper that so many of you alternative right people love to use. 
Um, but anyhow, you know, raid guards and Nords, I mean, none of that was supposed to be... I mean, in the Elder Scrolls, to me, I, I never even thought of things like that. To me, you choose a red guard because red guards have high, they have good stats in terms of just physical fighting. I mean, they have the adrenaline ability, they can move really fast, they can attack really fast, okay. Um, there were plenty of white people who played as red guards. That wasn't some type of racial thing. You played as red guards so you could get the special red guard bonuses. Just like you played, some people played as Nord so they could get the special Nord bonuses. Okay, some people played as Artmer so that they could get, um, I, I think they had a better magical regen bonus. Some people played as Bretons. It's a fantasy universe. Okay, it's a fantasy universe with different races. So, you know, sure they resemble the races on, you know, in real life, but still, I mean... He's talking about some a white person who plays as a red guard. That is common. So, as a person who has played Skyrim and Elder Scrolls games, you know, I do not really even understand what he's talking about. You know, I really do not. I mean, you can make your own character if you want to make... No one is restricting him from making a white character. No one is doing it. Just because people from a company are talking about, you know, their own opinions does not stop you from playing the game how you want to play the game. Oh my goodness, it's, it, it really is. He is just looking for things to complain about, he really is. On YouTube and Twitch, you'll get these white nerds that feel compelled as like an act of anti-racism, you know, they're proving they're an ally by creating a black RPG character and they're just like, I always make a black guy, right? I mean, <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, there's a whiff of cuckoldry about it, to be frank. And this, this person is really, he's really, really quite a pervert. Cuckoldry. In other words, and some of us understand what, what that joke means. In other words, Tyrone. Oh, he's, he's sort of doing this to be Tyrone. And he secretly wishes to be Tyrone. And the whole thing about the alternative right community, they have some really sick, sick ideas about black people. Jokes about black people. They say, hey, you know, Tyrone came to visit your girlfriend. And you're a cuck. In other words, the idea is that black men have, you know, big members, which we do. You know, I mean, this is... I mean, if, if they want to say we have big, if we come with big packages, hey, you know, for myself, I, as a person who has a big package, I think that is true. But, you know, the idea is that you're a cuck, you're a cuckold. In other words, you like your girl going with someone else. You know, you, you like to play as Tyrone because you like Tyrone going to visit your girl. You know, this is why we call you people bigots. This is why... We have low opinions of you people. This is why we do not get along with you. And you wonder why we avoid you. You wonder why we think that you people are anti-black. It is because of things like this. So somehow he has come to the conclusion that you are a cuck. That it is cuckoldry. If you happen to be a white person who plays as a black character. Well, specifically the Elder Scrolls. Many people play as a red guard because red guards start with some different abilities. It's an RPG, so of course if you pick a different race, that different race has its own little special starting abilities and it has its own stats that are unique to that race. So you pick an, a red guard because they are really good at physical combat. They're really good at, you know, certain things like stamina regen. You know, so that's why some people like to pick a red guard. Okay. But hey, apparently, according to this man, if you don't pick a Nord, if you're not trying to be the Viking sort of master Aryan race that Hitler spoke of, for whatever reason, hey, you're, you're just not, you know, you're not based. You must be woke or something. I am not saying this stuff, it is him. These are terms that he, are, he is using. He's, I mean, these are old alt-right terms. You know, I mean... 
I mean, I, I know all about it. I used to go in these spaces. I used to think, I used to think, hey, these people are not racist. I used to make up excuses. And I'm not going to call them racist. I will simply say they're anti-black. Anti-black is more specific. Anti-black is far more specific. I will put it that way. Because you see, anything, if black approaches their culture, if black approaches them in any way, they are opposed to it. And I can speak in the regard to col- basically certain individuals. Am I talking, am I saying that, you know, every white Euro-American is like this? No. But there are certain individuals who subscribe to certain, you know, who subscribe to these views. And to me, that's one of the oddest things to really witness. I mean, you're a cuck because you decide to choose a red guard in Skyrim. That's, that is ridiculous. Okay. And it's just evidence, really, of how negative the self-perception of Caucasians is within contemporary society. It's like a spiritual cuckoldry. Born, I guess, from being raised in a system of covert loxism. But really, only so much of this stuff can be tolerated as an apolitical normie before going, you know what, maybe I'm not going to shell out for your early access gay cocked version. But most of you will, including you. You complain about the games, but you still buy them. I get repacks on PC most of the time. So I don't even pay for my games, but... You know, you all complain, but you continue to play. It would be more honest if you just said, if some of you people involved in the conservative right, you know, decided, hey, you know what, games in general are liberal. We are not liberal. Let us read books instead. Let us do something more useful with our time. Because many of you, you, don't, you do not do your due diligence. You are not talking about the symbolism of things, you know, in Berserk or, or Elden Ring. You know, you're not talking about the religious, symbolical, and philosophical significance of the video games and movies that you play and watch. You are not talking about these things. You're, you're complaining about what you call the liberal culture. But you're not really... You're not really re- addressing what the culture means in general. A lot of you are not doing that. You have a lot of complaints, but as far as improving, basically getting away from it, you are not getting away from it. You're still involving yourself in it. If, the, if, the, if these games and these game developers are just so against you as white people, why do you keep buying their products? Why do you continue to buy their products if these people are against you, as you say? Why do you keep watching these movies? Like, And do I believe that this man, he sounds like an older man, do I really believe he is going to watch The Little Mermaid at his age? No. He's saying, oh, maybe I won't go then. Yeah, because you're not going to go in the first place. You're an older man. You don't want to see The Little Mermaid. You're not a little kid. That was a girly movie. Most most people like myself who were boys, we thought The Little Mermaid is a girly movie. We're, we were not interested in watching The Little Mermaid. If you were watching The Little Mermaid, other boys might tease you and say, oh, you know, ha ha, you're girly. Or, or something like that. You know, I mean, but anyhow, um, let us continue. Let us continue, to be honest. I thought he was going to say something more substantial, but he really is not saying very much. classic Western RPG that was probably way better. I'm going to go back and play Baldur's Gate 1, and you communists who claim to be game developers, you can suck my dick, my actual male anatomical penis, as opposed to the furry dog dildo. Hey, listen to this, people. This man is supposedly supposed to be conservative. Does he sound conservative to you? Does he sound conservative at all to you? I mean, he, he seems to be just as nasty as the, as the so-called liberals he's talking about. 
when you hear the things coming out of his mouth, he really seems to be as nasty, if not more so, than the very liberals he's talking about. Okay, how bad can you be, in other words? Okay, he's saying these, these liberal studios are so bad because they're promoting certain alternative lifestyles and what have you. But at the same time, what of value is he offering? Just a bunch of cursing? Just a bunch of anger? You know, is he supposed to be conservative? What is he supposed to be? What is, what is the basis for his values? Is it Christianity? Is it religion? What is it? This is what I'm talking about in regard to fake conservatives. They're not really conservatives. You know, basically the only thing they want in their media is for it to be white. That's it. They don't care how much sex is in it. They don't care how much violence is in it. They don't care how much profanity is in it. They just want they just want a white experience. They want the characters to be white. That is what they want. If there's black characters, that does not work for them. If there are black characters, that does not work for them. That is the only thing they're complaining about because you can hear how much this man is cursing. You can hear how unhinged he sounds, how ridiculous he sounds. You really can. So how he is supposed to be what we may call a conservative, this is supposed to be an alternative right conservative person, you know, he certainly does not exhibit any signs or any sort of character that I would consider to be conservative, you know, at all. But um, this is what, you know, the new conservative is. He loves his video games. It better not have black people in it. It can have all the sex and violence he, it, you know, he wants, you know, because after we, after all, we know that, you know, Dark Souls, is, which is a game he likes, Elden Ring, you know, has transgenderism in it. You know, Berserk has all types of sex and violence in it. It has a scene in which a woman is literally having intercourse with a horse. And this is done in a forceful way. It was quite disgusting. I'm not lying. That, you know, the stuff in that anime, he has the nerve to play Berserk music as he's talking about, you know, what a young white girl might say to her father as she's watching The Little Mermaid, a movie that I just showed you has sexual symbols in it. Um, um, or at least I believe I showed you that it has sexual symbols in it. Um, but, you know... Basically, the only thing that matters is that they're all white, right? You know, the only thing that matters is that they're white. It's not about how much sexual things are in the movie. You know, it just cannot be white. I mean, it just cannot have any black in it. The people have to be white, right? Okay, let me continue. As you probably have adorned across your office, you know, because again, in this quasi-religious, anti-white narrative of victimhood and guilt, they now want revenge. We live in the culture of leftoid revenge, where entertainment and art, you know, you're not supposed to produce these things to delight and add value to your customers' lives. No, all art in 2023 is part of like a woke jihad against normal people. And by normal people, I mean the average person. The, the average person, of course, is white. That's the idea. I mean, he's talking about getting revenge by putting black characters in media. By putting black characters in media, you are getting revenge. This is how crazy, this is how unhinged a lot of the stuff we hear from so many of these alternative right, so-called based people is. It is ridiculous to hear. It really is. Um... I mean, it is some of the most dumb stuff I've ever ever heard. Per capita, the mean, in what has to be peak clown absurdity, to cater to their tastes and to not insult them and berate them and participate in this performative ethno-sadomasochism will have you banished from these industries outright. This is the reality of pop culture under a system dominated by an elite that hates its subjects, and it's this very hatred that's kind of permeated everything, even down to the bread and circuses of our modern civilization. 
it's pointless. Well, if you hate them so much, stop buying the products. That is very simple. Do a boycott. Stop playing video games. Stop watching television shows. Read some books like I do. I can go the whole day and read books. This is so stupid. It's, oh, they're being mean on Twitter. They're saying that, that, that we, as white people, are making white characters on Baldur's Gate 3. This guy is woke. This guy is slippery. Who cares? Do not talk to them on social media. Buy your products. Play it. If you don't want to play it, don't play it. If you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. You know, it is so stupid. It is so stupid. We have this man literally cursing on Twitter saying, Oh, they told me F you. They said we're scum because we 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 don't want to play as black characters. You play as a black character in Skyrim, you're a cuck. I mean, this man is crazy. This man is... Th- these are the types of people a lot of young white men are watching. M- maybe some of them, like me, realize how ridiculous what this man is saying is but I mean I mean he's literally saying if you decide to put diverse uh, use a diverse cast for whatever reason maybe you're just an artist and you decided hey I want a black character here oh this is revenge for racism this is revenge for white supremacy and Jim Crow law oh my goodness you cannot make this stuff up You're, you're hearing this from him you are hearing it from him you really are to argue with these people as well because you're arguing with narcissists who operate within this framework of postmodern philosophy where nothing means anything to them, everything is liquid and formless. Their very identity itself is in flux. You know, this is the internal world. Well, I will put it this way. Um, to be entirely honest, one would question this man's values just simply based on the level of profanity that he uses. Okay, so this whole idea, oh, they're liberal and postmodern. When you're playing music from Berserk, which was a an anime and manga in which a woman was literally forcefully, you know, abused in a manner that was sexual by a horse, and there was more than one type of scene like that where it was just terribly disgusting. And this is a person who I'm sure has read that whole manga and watched that whole anime and saw all of the arguably evil stuff in it. And he wants to really question someone else's values and say, oh, they're postmodern. Then so is Berserk. So is Elden Ring. All of that is postmodern then. Because the values that are being asserted in Berserk and Elden Ring are values that are somewhat, you know, not what we would consider to be traditional at all. And, you know, based on this man's very speech, his very manner of speech, it is not traditional speech. You know, the level of profanity he is using and the level of anger that he has just simply based on the fact that you know, his, you know, the people who are developing the games have different opinions than him. Is just, it is quite incredible. He cannot even control his demeanor. You know, which to me, that shows quite a lot of... Of like a psychopath or a wow. narcissist. You know, they are able to twist their so souls the into such ugly forms Truly. in their pursuit of power. It's something that they're very good at. And the entire woke word salad ideology is a really good smokescreen. They can just kind of hide behind this state and corporate sponsored value system that really acts as more of a weapon. It's like the ultimate tool of critical theory. And they're everywhere. They're in every tier and every layer of okay. every institution. And well, we're- before we go any further, let us talk about the word woke. Origins and timeline of the word woke. Where did woke come from? Woke is a civil rights movement term. You know, the first um, recorded, you know, history of this word, of this phrase being used was wake up, Ethiopia, wake up, Africa, from Marcus Garvey, Jamaican philosopher and social activist. We have 
1938, blues musician Huddy Ledbetter, also known as Leadbelly, uses the phrase stay woke in his song Scottsboro Boys. 1940, the Negro United Mine Workers launch a strike in West Virginia against discriminatory pay. Discriminatory pay, a black union leader speaks about learning they were being paid less than their white counterparts. We were asleep but we will stay woke from now on. It has to do with social awareness. It has to do with staying aware and not being taken advantage of, you know, or being ready for, you know, discrimination, sort of, you know, it is a black civil rights term. You know, it it basically means the same thing as being aware, awake, you know. Um, William Melvin Kelly's essay, If You're Woke, You Dig It, appears in the New York Times. 1972, author Barry Beckham uses the word woke in the, his 1972 play Garvey Lives. Um, we have er- Erica Baidu's 2008 song Master Teacher uses the lyrics Stay Woke. So, listen, this word has, you know, and what do we have in 2022? We have Florida Governor DeSantis saying signs into law to stop woke. In other words, this has everything to do with the black community because you're using a word that comes from black black vernacular English. This has to do with black Americans. This has to do with black civil rights struggle. And some of you Republicans and some of you conservatives, so-called conservatives, a lot of you are fake conservatives. You conserve everything except the faith. You conserve everything except faith in Jesus Christ. You don't want your movies to have black people in it. You don't want your culture to become more black, but you certainly will not preserve the faith in Jesus Christ. Some of you are like that, and the the only thing you will not conserve is Christianity. And that's the truth. You know, for a lot of you people, especially, some of you have basically, you know, your Christianity has become Zionism. Some of you are not Christian at all, and you want to talk about conservatism. But... You know, the fundamentals of conservatism, of American conservatism, you have completely thrown away. So how can we believe you're conservative when you have people who speak like this? I mean, this man is cursing. He's just cursing and just literally becoming angry over video games and media. It is ridiculous. You know, but he does not know what the word woke means. He has an idea of it, and it basically means black or whatever else that he does not like being in his media. We're all supposed to be okay with this. It's like, excuse me, you know, Mr. Producer of Entertainment, rubbing your hands together as you take my hard-earned money and use it to fund subversive propaganda and political action that will disenfranchise my children and ruin and rob them of a real future in their own fucking societies. Listen to this. (laughs) It is hard to believe a man who talks like this even has children. When you hear how nasty his mouth is, you would think, okay, why would, you know, here you are, you know, the way you talk, you don't even sound wholesome. You don't even sound like you even have children. Why would you, you know, behave, you know, in the manner that you're behaving in? But anyhow... Um, there was something that I did want to look up, and I may have forgotten it. Um, I believe it had something to do with, one second, people. Um, yeah, there we go. Birth of a Nation. Let us talk about an example of propaganda. Um, let us just do it. We're going to come up here. Um, let me see. Um, Birth of a Nation was basically... Let me see. It was a movie... It was basically a racist, you know, movie. And it was about the KKK. It was about, you know, keeping, 
the the purity of white womanhood. Okay. Um, it, that was propaganda. That was a movie to sort of put black Americans and sort of portray them in a bad way. You know, um, let me see. Uh, you know, but basically glorified the KKK. I'm trying to find a picture of it. You can do your own research about it. But you know, yes, this movie had come out. This was propaganda too. You know, television and media has always been, has always had what we may call propaganda. Okay. Um, so we, we had this, which, you know, I mean, this was about keeping black people out of, of society and about keeping black people from integrating into white society. And what is he complaining about? Oh, there's, there's black people in movies, there's black people in video games. You know, this is a big problem to him. Maybe Ptolemy would like to watch this movie, Birth of a Nation. Maybe this is his kind of movie. Maybe it is, to be honest. Okay. Um, let me play his commentary. Because I'm not way a-okay with this, then what? I'm supposed to be treated like a fucking terrorist, is that right? The average normie Karen is now a terrorist, right? And why are they a terrorist? Because... They're questioning the punishment, you know? I mean, who are we to question the methods of treatment prescribed to us by these coastal intellectual elites who, like, benevolent... And listen to this. This is the whole idea. Oh, we whites are being oppressed. How? How are white people being oppressed in this country? How many white people are being denied jobs? How many white people are being killed, you know, due to racial profiling? How many, how many white people are being racially profiled? How many white people in New York are being stopped and frisked? You know, frisk. That's a weird word, frisk. But, you know, you had stop and frisk policy and it had to do with r- racial profiling. You know, you hear about Daniel Penny, who was a white man, you know, he shoked a man named Jordan Neely on a train, he was a black man, he shoked him for 15 minutes, and the man died. Um, that trial is still going on. How many white people have to deal with that? What about the, the Chinese man, the Chinese American man in, I believe it was North Carolina, who shot a 14-year-old black boy who walked out of the store. He was going to buy some water. He put the water back and he walked out of the store, after which he was followed by the Chinese American store owner and his son, who shot him in the back. You know, how many white Americans have to deal with those realities on a daily basis? How many do? Please tell me about how Karen is being oppressed. How much oppression is Karen suffering in the United States? Because, to be entirely honest, I am not, you know, as far as I can see, as far as I can see, white people are not being oppressed, you know, on the scale of black Americans. They just are not doctors will treat us through these Freudian Marcusian tools of psychoanalysis for the pathology of the Western authoritarian personality, the inherent kernel of fascism that lives within every single white child that needs to be eradicated one way or another. And that really is like the message coming from academia. It's the consensus, you know, it's everywhere. It's in our entertainment, it's in our children's entertainment. You pick a random university-educated woman out of a crowd and you ask her, so what do you think of white people? She'd be like, oh yeah, they're fucking evil. 
which should deconstruct their entire culture and civilization and artificially hold them down and crush them and make sure their path to success are sabotaged, their potential for a future completely ruined and decimated, their ability and motivation to have children and procreate undermined at every turn through entertainment, through academia, through media, to the point where... What? Oh my goodness, this man is going... He is going everywhere. Okay, apparently because there are people who have opinions about white American people. Or white people in general. I do not know if this man is, is British, is a white British person or what. Whatever he is. How are white people, and whether it be Australia, Canada, any of these countries, how are they being, you know, forced to stop? If, if they want to have children, they can have children. They have rights in all the countries in which they predominate. So, what he is saying does not make any sense. What rights do you not have because you are a white person? What rights are restricted from you because you are a white person? They can never say what rights they, they do not have because they are white. Oh, the, they put a black woman in the movie and that has infringed upon my rights. It's ridiculous. They, they have no real explanation. Their homosexuality and transgenderism is promoted because, of course, one inherent characteristic of these movements is that they do not create white children. In fact, the pride flag itself seems to just be a coalition of groups that do not produce white children. And in fact, this is all just about white children. White children are evil. Okay, bye-bye. You know, you get these women who, unironically, with a straight face, and a lot of them being white themselves. Will what? I mean, well, it doesn't produce any type of children. I mean, how can... Okay, obviously homosexuality does not create children. That is common sense. So it does not create black children. It does not create white children. It does not create children of any race. Wow. I mean, that is such a... Oh my goodness. I mean, the, the stupidity of the arguments that this man is presenting, the points that he is bringing up, they, they're just too stupid. Oh my goodness. Well, signal boost, what is essentially a genocidal ideology, but because these values come from an authority, be it the state, be it academia, well, they go unquestioned, especially by women. The modern religion of the West and the woke zeitgeist itself seems to be at war with the very idea that European children should be allowed to thrive and to have futures. You know, I find that probably the most abhorrent aspect of woke but listen you know and of course he's talking about european children he's talking about white children but the truth is if if it is a homosexual relationship obviously you're not going to have children unless you're using in vitro fertilization so this doesn't just affect white people it affects all races you know but oh my goodness he is but you see his problem has it has everything to do with color ism and i like to use wokeism as kind of an umbrella term to cover a lot of modern leftist ideology including neo-marxism i.e third wave feminism intersectionalism but please don't get me wrong don't think that i'm not going any further down that rabbit hole because of course these intellectual movements came from people and not just any people but people with a unique well, one of the reasons you're going to do that, one of the reasons you're going to use the term woke is because, you know, that is the fad for a lot of you conservative people, you fake conservatives, you know, who claim to be conservative, but really you've just picked up a bunch of alternative right talking points. You're anti-black. You know, you're, you're not so much conservative as you are anti-black. Because the term woke has a meaning and it has a history. It would not take very much time for any of you to learn that history. Okay? To learn the history of woke, but you will not do it. You will not take the time to understand the history of... Most of you do not have any conception of black culture or black history. Unfortunately, that's just the truth. There are a lot of you, 
you don't care about black people, you, you want nothing to do with black people, and just going on your channel, I can see that to you, George Floyd's death was a joke to you, you made fun of it. And so you have this video here where you say, I used to be a Marxist like you. Then I took a George Floyd to the knee. And the, the whole idea is that you're taking the Skyrim joke, a joke that was in the RPG Skyrim in which you have a soldier who says, you know, I used to be an adventurer like you. And then I took an arrow to the knee. So the idea is that, you know, you're literally making fun of the death of George Floyd. So, you are anti-black, you make a point of being anti-black, you don't want black people in the movies, you don't want black people in the video games, that is your only problem. It does not matter how much sex and violence the video games have. You like Japanese video games because, for whatever reason, they really represent, you know what I suppose might be called white characters in the way that you like. But you like black characters to be represented in this way, to look like Mr. Popo, right? You like to represent, you like to see representations of black people that are in unflattering and disrespectful because you have a low opinion of black people. You are anti-black. So when you said that if you're a white man and you're playing as a red guard in Skyrim, a black looking character in Skyrim, you must be a cuck. You know, you're, you must be practicing cuckoldry. That told me everything I needed to know. I really didn't really, I mean that, that spoke for itself, it really did. That, that is incredible. Anyhow, let me continue. Unique agenda where it's this idea that you can't overthrow and destroy the fruit of Western civilization outright and through warfare. So you do it through bio-Leninism, I guess. You brainwash the women of the West and you force mass immigration under the guise of anti-racism. This is the project. I mean, if anybody asks that question, well, why is everything so fake and gay right now? Why are all movies? Well, about mass immigration, which so many of you conservative people, you fake conservatives like to complain about, when you have empires like the United States, Britain, France, Germany, and other such countries over the course of basically, you know, hundreds of years going into different countries, taking resources, taking land and colonizing different areas, stripping wealth from all of those countries, you know, the people who you disenfranchise, the people that you that are abused in those conquests, basically what they start to do is go to these more developed countries that have taken resources from them and they start to go to them to get more opportunities. So what we may call, you know, predominantly, predominantly white, you know, white populated nations they happen to use their power to take over great deals of land and resources. And they created a good deal of havoc in many countries. And they still benefit from it to this day. And so, because of that, there are immigrants from Africa, you know, going to Europe. Europe, which still to this day takes advantage of African mineral wealth. You have Chinese individuals who, you know, are are now taking advantage of, sh of African mineral wealth and African resources. Um, you have Latinos who are going into, um, you know, North America, you know, the United States and Canada. Um, so this is just a result of conquest. This is the result of, of being, you know, of basically conquering massive amounts of land and resources from other people groups. What garbage, why, why, why? And it's like, you know, the real answer, if you want to know the real answer, if you really want to know, there's a war happening against European children. You know, they're targeting our children directly. That's the most fucked up part of this entire system that we're living in at the moment. I mean, it's just so evil. And the truth is, this is the perspective shared among a lot of our entertainment professionals. 
top-down, bottom-up, an evil elite in league with an evil lumpen proletariat. Well, listen to this. If it is so bothersome to you, stop watching the entertainment. The way you curse shows me that you have a very low degree of culture anyhow. The amount of profanity that you use shows me that you have a very low degree of culture. Of digital culture, of grammatical culture, it shows me that you are very little better than the people you criticize just based on the language you use. You do not care about propriety in speech and you obviously do not care about propriety in culture because you you play a video game like Elden Ring which was the one you used for the podcast. You have no problem with violence and sexuality. Even myself. You know, I play violent games too. Do I say, oh, I'm better than the people who create violent video games? No, because I play the violent video games. If I want to play a violent video game, I play a violent, vi violent video game. Do I really expect that those people who make violent video games and sexual video games are going to be conservative? No. Am I trying to grandstand and say, oh, I'm so much better than them? No. But if I'm going to be making a video saying, oh, they're destroying Western civilization and the, most of what is coming out of my mouth is curse words and profanity and saying, oh, you can suck my D because, you know, you think that I should make a black character. Why would I say such things as th such as that? That seems so stupid. That seems so ridiculous. I am not even joking. You really do not even recognize how ridiculous that even sounds. All right, but anyhow, let me continue to listen to this podcast that he made, which, oh my goodness. An alliance with the goal to crush the ethnic Western European culture okay. and family unit, a 20th century project come to fruition. As I've said before, the political will of multiple generations of Western men neutered in this absurd era where people are losing literally everything just for standing up and going, excuse me, but I didn't do anything wrong. My children didn't do anything wrong. Why are you persecuting me? Why do you hate me so much? These are the people whose heads are now on the... Wow. Okay. I just want some examples of the persecution. I want some examples of these white people being persecuted. I want some examples of some white people not receiving, you know, being rejected from jobs because they're white white people who are being abused, white people who are being racially profiled by police, white people who are basically being, you know, just mistreated on a daily basis because of their race, not receiving opportunities, you know, r racial, you know, discrimination against white people, you know, actively happening in which it, it infringes upon your life so much that basically there's some type of you know, racist system of, of supremacy in which, you know, you're functioning as a citizen in whatever country you live in is being interfered with. If the media is, is toxic, if the media is bad for you, stop watching it. Stop. Do, if you want your family to not be subjected to it, do not consume the media. Excuse me. It is very simple. But, I mean, the way this person is acting... Oh my goodness, I I mean, I really do not know what to say. To me, it's this, this whole act of fake propriety, of grandstanding, of virtue signaling in a way, as he basically curses like a sailor, which is just so Chopping ironic. Block. Condemned to be ostracized, to lose friends, to lose family, in some cases to lose their own lives, to despair. So much wasted human potential only for society to look the other way, as if it's by design. Empowerment for me and not for thee. This is the dark side of the rainbow. When you see the pride flags and all of the fake corporate sponsored jovial celebrate. And we have to realize the all he's literally talking about this because your know, media is becoming more diverse and that is an attack on him. I cannot make this up. I cannot. I mean, you may wonder, what is he talking about? You just heard it. Ariel, Ariel from The Little Mermaid is black, and there's liberal people. 
Now, I myself am what you may call a real conservative. In other words, I conserve the faith. I'm conservative in the traditional sense and where my values are are based upon my Christian faith. Okay? Do I care that some liberals are making video games and, and cartoons? For one thing, I, don't, I do not need to consume them if I don't want to. You know, just like this game. I would play this game, but I would never catch myself. It's just like... Unless I'm trying to expose something like Berserk, I would never watch it or read it. I I would not find any joy in that. But this is a man who's literally playing the Berserk music in his video because he respects it so much. He's talking about families, but Berserk has some of the nastiest sexual stuff I've ever seen. It has some of the, the most grotesque violence I have ever seen. And this is a man talking about, oh, they're trying to destroy white society. Yeah, you don't care about propriety, you just care about race. You see, the only thing he is really concerned about is race. The thing he is concerned about is the fact that things are becoming more, there's more, there's more colors. And he doesn't like that, it's supposed to be white. The culture is supposed to be white, the people are supposed to be white. Rating and smiling drag queens and confetti and all that, the most sick part of this entire affair is that it's all being done as part of an expression of ancient ethnic hatred against innocent European children. And I know there's going to be people that don't want to hear that, they won't agree with it, you know. No, because obviously you are a white nationalist and you are anti-black. That's just the whole point, because truth be told, the drag queens in the media that affects black people, that affects Latino people, that affects, you know, that affects all races, that affects Asian people, that affects everyone. But he keeps once again returning the point back to, oh, this is against Europeans. Well, what, if, what is the history of Europeans and why would anyone have any type of bias against them? You know, white people will never be in a situation in which they are any type of underclass. There's no structural discrimination against them because for the most part in Britain, in the United States, in Canada, the rulers we have are white Europeans. They're white Euro-Canadians, white Euro-Americans, what have you. They're white individuals. You know, in regard to representation, well, if we have different representatives in media or whatnot, you know, that, you know, that's not so much a threat to him because white people still predominate in, in just about all of these developed nations and all over the world. Okay, so what he is talking about it's white nationalism, that is all it is. You know, but the, the truth is, is that it really is not even consistent. Because if you were really a true white nationalist, you would be telling us, do not consume the media. And that's exactly why I say many of you are fake conservatives. You're these alternative right fake conservatives. You're not real conservatives, because if you're a real conservative, you would say, you know what? Maybe you should stop watching television. Maybe you should stop playing video games. Maybe you should just do something else. For me, the video games that I play, I do not play video games often, but when I do, you know, it does not affect me. Because I don't take this stuff to heart. I'm not looking at what game developers are saying. To me, I could care less. I used to look and see what game developers were saying on their social media pages, but I no longer do. That does not concern me. I know what I believe. I have a firm faith in what I believe, and I really do not need to be concerned about or intimidated by, you know, what particular liberal, you know, game developers feel or believe. That is not a threat to my existence. And if it is, if the media that they produce is, you know, not to my liking or I don't want to play it or, or view it, I do not have to consume it. 
So he is not telling you to not consume the media. He is just complaining and cursing a lot. You know? Oh, there's going to be excuses. You're going to attack my character, ad hom. But I'm telling you, this is how it is. And I guess for Hollywood right now, we're in like the twilight years of the blockbuster, really, where it could be game over. And frankly, it's been a long time coming. And, you know, press S. Press S to spit on the grave of these Hollywood communist pedophiles who have been shitting their subversive degeneracy into the minds of children across honest. the world perpetuating this kind of sicko anti-west let's be honest anti-western he says let's let's be honest hollywood has always been to some extent corrupt it always has been you know the movie industry has always been to some extent to to some extent corrupt we have the birth of a nation, a movie in which the KKK is glorified. Okay, this is what used to happen. These were the movies that used to be promoted. Basically promoting this idea where you have to, you have to destroy, you know, the black population and protect the white woman. And how is it any different now? Where is the, this mass persecution of white people that he is talking about? It was never this bad for white people where they had to fear or maybe not fear, but expect that people such as the KKK would be hunting them down and that a whole movie would support their, the destruction of black people in the country. Persecution are things like slavery, Jim Crow, the Tuskegee experiments in which black communities were experimented on with different drugs and syphilis and other things like that. But, you know, this man is talking about persecution on white people. I just want to know what type of persecution he is talking about. You know, to be entirely honest, he's talking about, oh, they're trying to attack a European, or European, um, the European youth. It's, it is ridiculous. It is really ridiculous. If you don't want to watch the media, if you don't want to participate in the media, you don't have to. Get your kids to read some books that will be smarter for it. Oh my goodness. I mean, there are very few things good you can find on the internet. Don't let your kids watch the internet because all they'll find, you know, basically the internet for the most part, you know, unless they're using it for books, it's just going to be porn and video games. You know, so a lot of problems with the kids could be prevented if you had better parents. But most of the parents let the kids use the internet. They let their kids use the phones. And what do they get involved with? Porn and video games. So that is exactly what it is. Your anti-white worldview, you know, that's what they've been peddling for a long time. And it's just been so counterintuitive, really, when it comes to entertainment. It's that these movies, these video games, this culture is absolute cancer. And I think it's that very hostility that's fueling a new countercultural backlash, not unlike the atmosphere in 2016, as a matter of fact, but darker. You know, there's some red pills that have been rising to the surface of the public consciousness in recent years that back in 2016 would have been considered the absolute katana's edge of online political discourse. So, no, it's not. It's not new. You know, there have been little racist groups on 4chan and 8chan for the longest kind of time. You know, um, the incels have had their little racist groups. You know, these people who are basically obsessed with media, complaining about liberalism, but at the same time actively participating in liberalism and not really adopting any type of strict Christian culture or anything like that but really just living their lives in a liberal way while complaining about liberals. People who have very little discipline, but they're talking about how liberals, oh, people are so liberal, and they're not conservative. They are not conservative at all. You just have a bunch of whining, complaining people who have nothing relevant to add to discussions. If I talk about something being anti-black, at least I can point towards history. 
these people talk about, oh, whites are being persecuted. Whites are receiving persecution. They're coming after specifically whites. All right, tell me how whites are being persecuted. Show me some examples of how, you know, the, the government is against whites, of how the school system is against whites, about, of how the police officers against, are against whites, about how, you know, the farming business is against whites. We have found... You know, I mean, he cannot provide any evidence. We can provide evidence in the other direction of black farmers not, you know, being treated differently. We can provide evidence in the other direction in regard to black people being treated differently by police, the government, you know, the legal institutions. Excuse me. We can find plenty of evidence of that, and I can refer to it. And I can do whole videos about it, as I have done before, when I last talked about woke. Okay, well, about an Asian American pastor named Asna, called Asna Avenger. But anyhow, you know, let us continue because I want to finish playing this man's video at some point. I guess that's indicative of this shift in the Overton window, even though. The powers that be are spending more money than ever, they're wasting more energy than ever, playing cultural whack-a-mole as they suppress dissident figures and speech online, you know, it's that they're losing control of a lot of narratives and it's happening in real time. In 2023, everybody knows on some level how this game is played and what's going on. Everybody feels that bubbling anarcho-tyrannical energy this soft, gaslit atmosphere of cruelty being stoked at every turn. But going beyond the abstract and actually getting specific, well, that is gatekept, especially in mainstream conservatism. But the point is, whether you're on the left... Well, here's the problem. He's not being specific. Okay? He's not being specific. He's talking about cruelty. But how many conservatives talk about people like Jordan Neely... How many conservatives were talking about George Floyd? There were conservatives who were celebrating the death of George Floyd. And I myself, I do not approve of the crimes that George Floyd had committed. However, he was still a man and he should have, you know, he should have been treated like a man. You don't just shock a person to death. When you shock a person to death, you're not doing your job as a, as a police officer. Okay? You simply are not. And so, this man, you know, he jokes about stuff like that. And this is what many of our, you know, I myself as a black American, as a, fa as a black American who is foundational to the United States, a descendant of freedmen, of slaves, um... I do not, you know, this is why people such as myself, we will never really be Republicans. And we will never support white conservatives for the same reason we do not support white liberals. Because they take our words and they take our culture and they try to associate it with sexual stuff. The, the white Republicans, they like to take, you know, black American culture and basically they say, well, you know, you black Americans, you, you need to learn from us white conservative people and you just need to, you know, you need to stop, you know, all of your efforts to sort of gain justice in this country. There is no racism. There is no racism at all. Everything is fair in this country. Don't you dare complain. You're, 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 you're um, trying to elicit pity. You're trying to elicit white guilt. We will not tolerate that. This is what we hear from white Republicans. We hear that our struggles as, as black people are, are basically nothing. They're meaningless. And that white people are being persecuted. White people, the, most, the majority population, the dominant population, are being persecuted. Black people are not being persecuted. You can make jo jokes about George Floyd, about a knee being taken to his neck, about him dying on the street. And, and talk about how, you know, 
about how the the white society is against white people. You know, the majority white government and the majority white nation is against white people. And white people are pers- are persecuting white people. They're not persecuting black people. They're not doing that. That's entirely no. That that's nonsense. There's there are not anti black police officers. There are not anti black, you know, people in the legal system. We're all just delusional and we do not know what we're talking about. But yeah, white people are being persecuted. He cannot pre- prevent present any sort of examples. He cannot present any sort of specific examples of it, but, you know, he means that. He really thinks that, and he's, you know, he's telling us the truth. So, that is how it is. Okay. Now, let me continue. After all the right, the tide has reached a point where these conversations are going to happen in private if they don't happen online. You know, they're going to happen at the pub. They're going to happen between close friends, trusted friends. Although those bonds of fraternity in the West have been severely undermined, they still exist, you know, in the spirit of classic gaming. And if you guys listening to me spurg out on this channel, it's proof of the direction that culture is heading subtly. Because, of course, you know, with the mainstream so controlled for such a long period of time without a real counterculture and without the ability to really talk about the edgy truths of life, and of society while nature abhors a vacuum and with these new dissident because he is such an edge lord now they're little racist little anti-black white supremacist gaming groups like the one that griffin gaming has and the little gamergate thing and sargon of akkad and those people they will not do anything they buy the games from the very same liberals they claim to hate and if they were serious about this whole oh, classic gaming, your Japanese people really... Yeah, a lot of Japanese people, they're liberal. Even their so-called conservatives are liberal. They're a lot like you fake conservatives over here in the West. Because you do not have any type of conservative Weltanschauung. Because if you were really conservative, you would live a conservative life. You would. You wouldn't be playing games so often. You wouldn't have this whole culture built on video games. Games would just be something you do. It would not be some type of some type of lifestyle. It would not constitute your Weltanschauung, your worldview. This would just be something that you wouldn't even you would not even get angry about liberal game developers because this is just something you engage in as a hobby. You would be doing other things like, you know, like fishing or going out and reading books and studying yourself and edifying your mind and body and you would not you know video games would be the last thing on your mind it would do it would be something you did after maybe a hard day of work and you would just relax and you would not care so much if you saw liberal things in the games because a lot of you play games that have liberal things in it and you want to justify it like oh I'm not liberal you play Elden Ring and you're tell you are telling me that you only play conservative media that you only engage with conservative media none of this media is conservative it is all liberal it none of it has to do with any type of traditional values especially not Christian values but a lot of you are you fake conservatives you're not Christian anyway okay you're not and a lot of you curse like sailors. Figures within Gen Z who are finding platforms and finding audiences despite being banned on most, if not all, of the mainstream state-approved social media spaces. I mean, you know, one can only hotly anticipate a cultural pendulum swinging right with such force it's like Thor's hammer itself, utterly annihilating the postmodern society with the force of a thousand atomic bombs. Okay, it's replaying. But yes, that is it. That was hard to go through. That was hard to deal with. I mean, but as I said, if you want to live a conservative lifestyle, if you want to get away from 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 any type of sort of what you may call liberal contamination, then just stop absorbing and consuming the media. 
media has always had propaganda. You know, if you don't want to see black characters in media, just stop watching movies or just watch old movies. He's saying, oh, I'm not going to play Baldur's Gate 3. Yes, I bet you will. I bet you will. Because none of you people who, you know, none of you conservative people who love Elden Ring stopped yourselves from playing Elden Ring even though they didn't have a, a male and female option and they literally gave you a transgender option. But did you folks complain about what a Japanese game did? No, you did not. Because you think everything from Japan is based because a lot of them are attuned with that old, that old, you know, World War II German Nazi culture. And you really appreciate those games and things like Berserk. You know, which is just utterly graphic and violent and sexual on all types of levels. But a lot of you like it. Okay. You know, but I mean, what I heard was a lot of unintelligible rambling, you know, the reasoning, you know, the, the, the disc, the, di- the discursive reasoning was so lacking that basically, you know, what I heard would, was just a profanity laden rant, a profanity laden rant. That is what I heard. And it was... I mean, it was just pretty, pretty bad, honestly. Um, I expected more than that because I did not, you know, this is sort of a blind reaction. I did not really listen to this beforehand, but, you know, except for a few seconds. And then I said, you know, I want to respond to this. And it was less impressive than I ever could have imagined it would be. You know, um, I like intelligent arguments. But this was not an intelligent argument. He's talking about culture that affects every race of people. And then he's talking about, oh, this, you know, this, is, this is against European children. And I'm thinking, are you joking? Are you joking? No. But I saw how he framed the argument. Oh, they're, they're, bringing, they're making media more diverse. Because, yes, there was a time in the United States and Britain where you would watch a movie and all you would see would be white British people or white American people. You would see Euro people. You would not see any people of any other race. You would not see black people and you would not see any other race of people. All you would see would be Euro people. That is who you would see. You would not see, you know, Afro people or black people or any other type of people. You would not see them. So... You know, this is just the truth. So, you know, every, it makes sense that every year, you know, ever since the fall of Jim Crow and a lot of racist, you know, laws and different racist institutions, you know, it it makes sense that society would become more diverse. And it makes sense that you would have more immigration because all of those European countries in the United States went into different countries and basically colonized and destroyed, you know, you know, basically opened up whole civilizations to globalism. So, you know, you see different people of different races because of the conquest and the successful conquests of Europe and the United States. That is why you see all types of different people in Europe now and in the United States now. Now, a lot of those people work to the detriment, um, especially of the native populations. But, hey, this is a result of conquest. So that history, that, that history of these white civilizations applies. You know... I mean, you can complain about it, or you can keep your values, you know, and just listening to that man, I do not think that he really has, you know, true religious values, to be honest. I mean, how are you so bothered about what movies show when you could just not watch the movie and you could just simply decide to make the conscientious decision 
to not watch those movies or to not consume that type of media. If you don't want to see black people, if you don't want to play as black characters, or if you don't like what certain game developers say, then do not use their products. Do not consume their products. But instead of doing that, you're saying, oh, they're calling the scum, they're saying F you, and I'm thinking, no, you're saying F you. You would not be able to run a business if you were calling your customers scum. You would not be able to run a business if you were literally telling your, you know, the people who buy your game, oh, F you. No. Larian would be out of business. So you see, it's just he's projecting out of anger. He's talking about guilt, but he is the one, it seems like he feels, you know, he has emotions about these things, these, these events in history. And, you know, if you do not like a product, you do not need to buy it. Why ever you would want to have your child, you know, watch Disney products, I have no idea. Disney has been well known as being a corrupt company that, you know, propagandizes in many ways. So, you know, I mean... We have this, I mean, look here. We're going to look through all, all of these examples. The Little Mermaid, we can see that little male sexual organ. Okay, this, this priest with an erect, you know, erect. He, he is erect. He has an erect organ. I'm not going to say the word on YouTube. I'm trying to choose my words carefully. An erect phallus. Okay, here, there's a topless woman. There's a woman who... You know, for whatever reason, the rescue is approximately 38 minutes into the film as Bianca and Bernard, Bernard fly through the city in a sardine can. The image of a topless woman can be seen in two different frames. Disney claims the images were not placed in the frame by their animators, but were inserted during the post-production process. Sure, sure, sure it was, Disney. Disney has done this before. This is the type of content that you think is so good. All that old-fashioned, old-fashioned content that didn't have so many black people in it. And then you have this sexual movie who framed Roger Rabbit. And basically, let's see what we, what we can see here. Who framed Roger Rabbit? These screen caps come from the scene where, when Jessica gets thrown from a car after they hit a light post. She spirals out of the vehicle, and as she does, her dress flies up, and it can be seen that she is not wearing any panties. This whole movie was to get you sexually attracted. You mean to tell me that somehow this is good for your children? It's, oh, that Ariel is black now. That's so terrible. Well, you know, we have another one. Who framed Roger Rabbit, Baby Herman, walks under the skirt of his nanny. He has seen it, extending his middle finger, looking up into her skirt. The middle finger was edited out, uh, the, out of the DVD release of the film, as you can see in the bottom of the ha bottom half of the image. Because it is sexual. This is about sexuality. This is about getting your children involved in sexual things. So how is that any, any less horrible than all of the LGBT stuff? sexuality has been propagandized to our children in these cartoons and in these child programs for a long time now this is nothing new it's nothing new you can see that it's nothing new we have this Hercules after Hercules punches the river guardian a horseshoe hits him on the head causing a phallic shaped bump to grow out of his head it eventually grows into a phallus shape and including morphing into his eye, eyebrows into a set of, you know, the two male sexual organs, the balls. Okay. Nasty. This is what has been promoted to the church. So this is nothing new. Oh, everything's becoming sexual now. Everything has been sexual. Everything was sexual a long time ago. As these people have been watching television, they have been exposed to a good deal of sexual content. Why pretend that all of a sudden the sexual content is worse now than it was before? It has always been there. This is stupid. Toy Story 3. The scene shows the toy characters reacting with wide-eyed shock seeing their now grown-up owner, Andy, engaging in a grown-up grown -up sex act. You know, only the suggestive shadow is viewable. However, it has been proven that the image with the shadow did not actually appear in any of the 
any version of Toy Story 3. It was created as a viral hoax. But you see, that was a hoax, but they have put sexual stuff in their movie before, in their movies before. Now we have Hercules. When the muse are, muses are singing the song Zero to Hero, after one she after one sings is he bold she steps forward and her dress flies up revealing once again that she is not wearing anything under her robe this is all sexual stuff get out of here don't tell me that somehow oh things are you know they're trying to corrupt the children the, the white girl's asking why the little mermaid is black no there's far more worrisome things far more horrible things to witness then a, a black mermaid get out of here this is ridiculous okay we have the lion king the poster for disney's 2002 re-release of the lion king secretly featured the image of a woman only wearing small panties clearly showing off her her assets yeah we already know look at that it is so clear oh the lion king a, a classic kids movie not you know right now we see, you know, the Lion King, after Simba lays down on the cliff, dust flies up into the sky and forms the word sex for a brief moment. Now, there used to be people talking about things like this. Okay, this is from E-Bomb's World, an old website. But look, a black mermaid is nothing. A black Frey Holland from Forspoken is nothing. These... Fake conservatives want to talk about non-issues, things that hardly make any sense. Look at what the kids are seeing. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Esmeralda's curvy body is highlighted and appears to be naked during her fire dance. In most of her dance, she appears clothed, um, but several frames show her naked, show a naked body with the most detail around her breast and, breast and inner thigh area to sexualize the children so this is not anything new Disney has never been a particularly good company Mickey Mouse um, so coming from the wonderful um, I think it's Bladded coming from the wonderful minds working for Euro Disney Bladded has cover art showing Mickey with his mouse with his hand around a large blue penis aka Minnie's body so this is nothing new you know the sexual stuff has been heavily promoted in the movies so this whole idea oh it's a black mermaid it's a black mermaid that's not good for white people look at how insignificant your arguments are that is how insignificant your arguments are that it is ridiculous to hear such nonsense come out of anyone's mouth. You know, it, it really is. But, um, I mean, that is what um, he is complaining about, basically. I mean, media is becoming diverse. He does not like the fact that media is diverse. Everyone should be white. Well, even in the old media, you can find weird sexual stuff that you know, can affect the youth. And I do not think he cares about the youth because by the way he is talking, just based on all of that cursing, based on, based on all of that cursing, I already can tell that he does not care about children. I don't know if he has children or not, but it really does not matter. Because by the way he was speaking, I can tell. If you really care about raising respectable children why would you be cursing that much this is a video that they could find on the internet but to be honest I really doubt that he has any children um but this was an interesting video to do to be honest um I really expected more of an intelligent argument from that man but you know, I did not get one. It was probably one of the dumbest videos I've reviewed on my channel. And I do not know, I really do not like providing videos in which people curse a lot. But I'm going to have to, 
you know, I'm going to have to really just post it on my channel. Anyhow, um, this, this was very interesting. May you be blessed and farewell, viewers. All right.